Okay, we are live. So hi, everybody, and welcome to another CCS Artist Shoutouts. Our Saturday Artist Shoutouts feature one staff member each week to discuss their creative and professional practices, personal artwork, interest in teaching, favorite classes, advice for students, and more. So today we are featuring Edward, Eduardo, Edward, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so Mr. Eve was actually a CAP student when he was in high school. Um, he is now the special programs liaison for CAP and has, um, and has been a teaching artist with us since 2015. He usually teaches classes such as drawing, painting, printmaking, and intro to arts and crafts. Mr. E is from LA, but grew up mostly in Southwest Detroit and is currently receiving a degree in illustration from the College for Creative Studies. Now he is working as an illustrator, primarily focusing on drawing, acrylic painting, and several small murals in the Southwest Detroit area. The advice that Mr. E would give to artists following his footsteps would be to not be afraid to draw copies from life or your favorite artists. It's good practice. You don't need to just create from your imagination to continue, consider yourself a good artist. Many artists take inspiration from real life. So thank you, Eduardo, for joining us today on this Saturday. Well, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm hopefully I'll have some, something to share that, that people will find useful. Awesome. So I want to talk a little bit about your work at first. So you're an illustrator, you do paintings and some murals. Um, if you want to tell us a little bit more about that, like your inspiration, your practice, anything along those lines. Yeah, so so like as an illustration student, you know, it's a very flexible practice. You know, I started off doing murals in high school when I was a CAP student. Um, and that kind of, when I, going into illustration, that kind of like, I felt like that fit into that category where I can, you know, do large scale paintings um, on the side of buildings. But if I wanted to do smaller gallery work or book stuff, like, hey, you know, illustration would be the place to do that. Um, so when I was doing um, these small, like kind of community murals, um, it was a mural project uh, facilitated through CAP and it was like on garages for like homeowners on the side of small businesses and you know a lot of times you know they people would ask me to do kind of net like natural landscapes and I think I kind of just took that and like I really vibed with it and I think um, in my work I've always tried to like incorporate scenes of nature um, animals, leaves, trees, um, maybe because growing up in the city, you know, I, I didn't get to see enough of that. Um, so it's something that I long to and I really enjoy, you know, putting in my work. And would you say that that's like the type of imagery that you use the most in your artwork is like landscape work, nature? Yeah, I think, um, because it's very organic, it's very easy to, you know, you know, have fun with it, like the way you draw a branch, the way you draw vines, it's like, if you can, you can, it doesn't have to be very precise, you know, like an architectural drawing, um, where you can easily kind of, where you kind of have to pay attention to the perspective, how things are looking in the, going into the distance. Um, I do love drawing figures. But you know, you also have to know a lot about anatomy. Um, so it's, I think it's easy to kind of like, for me especially, to kind of get frustrated and kind of like overthink things. So when I draw trees and stuff from nature, it just kind of is more relaxing. It kind of just puts me in this peaceful place, um, you know. And I like going out into nature, going out for hikes and seeing that kind of stuff. So you know, showing that in my work is just fun, it's peaceful, and I don't have to overthink it. That's really nice. I feel like more of us could use that uh, peaceful vibe, <laughs> especially now. Um, and so, um, how did you choose to go into art? Um, it was through my experience as um, a student in the CAP mural program, where I had 
I already had an interest in drawing, um, but up until that point, I wasn't really taking it seriously. It was, you know, just doodling in class when I was distracted, um, drawing, you know, like the stereotypical manga anime characters. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I heard about the mural program and I reluctantly like participated, but I worked with the artists from CAP and, you know, that program was a summer program um, where high schoolers got paid to paint murals. So it kind of made this like cool connection for me, like, oh, I'm working while making art. So this is something I can, you know, make a living out of, which maybe was more obvious to more pe to people that, you know, that it was a career choice that you can have. But for me, that's where it kind of clicked was like, oh, I can, you know, go into art and, you know, make a living from it. That's awesome. And so now you've kind of come full circle. So now you're actually teaching for CAP, doing like those types of classes, and you're in the office currently. <laughs> um, and so what, so that's kind of like, I would assume how you got into teaching for CAP a little bit is like you were there and then you went to CCS and now you're working for CAP. So what would you say is like your like favorite part about teaching or being a teaching artist or like favorite class to teach for CAP, any of those, any, anything in that realm. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just about, you know, from my experience, having been a student in CAP, you know, I felt like I received, I received the help that, that kind of push. So ha seeing that opportunity to teach um, for me was kind of cool now that I can like, work with kids from my neighborhood from Detroit and maybe help them find their creative voice um, was a pretty cool thing. Um, like I'm in the office right now where I'm kind of doing more office work, kind of organizing these classes where I can kind of um, put together like, like this cool team of other artists to bring programs into the city. Um, I do and I, I am looking forward to like going back into the classroom and kind of like doing um, you know more hands-on projects well right now it would be more virtual learning but you know like right. working with students and bringing and having that more direct you know like feedback um, is something that I look forward to um, and then in terms of what I like teaching is even though I wouldn't consider myself a printmaker it is printmaking that I enjoy like kind of showing like these introductory like basic practices because I think um, for students they can really kind of see that that repetitive um, process the technical aspect of making art they can make multiple pieces they don't have to have like one precious painting that you have to work like for so many hours on but then there's also that aspect of like you know it's it's easy to make mistakes when you're making multiple prints and they don't all turn out the same, but there's something cool that comes out of making those little mistakes. And, you know, even if they do come up with that, they turn, they still turn out really cool. And I think um, I, I'd like to see like students really enjoying that process. I totally agree with you. Printmaking is also one of my favorite things to do for that reason. <laughs> it's very, it can be very uh, forgivable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And once you like, it's forgiving and then, you know, you kind of learn from that and then like, okay, well, let's try again. You know, it's very easy to, you know, not feel discouraged if you do kind of make some mistakes. Yeah, that's a great, great thing to add to that. <laughs> um, and so, uh, why why is art important to you? Uh, I think it's just this really cool way of visually capturing, you know, what we're thinking, what our personalities are, um, and putting it out into the world. Um, you know, like people keep write books, people you know write memoirs or journals. I think art, you know, in a lot of ways is very similar, except. Um, for art, for me, it's kind of like expressing that through color, through this image that's either through something that's coming from my memory, something I saw while driving and, you know, just capturing that 
and expressing that. And I guess expressing that more vividly by, you know, um, embellishing it with cool colors, you know, with some kind of um, textures, that kind of stuff. That's awesome. Um, and so we have time for one more question and I'm going to ask you to talk about um, your advice for artists following in your footsteps. I think, I think um, one of the biggest things that like has been a struggle for me was this idea that, you know, good artists, you know, um, should already know how to draw from imagination. You know, you just, you're born with that talent, which isn't the case. Um, and especially in high school, um, when I was drawing, um, I felt like if I drew a character, it had to be perfect and I didn't have to like seek reference, but um, I would recommend, you know, if there's something that cool that you see, try to draw from life and you get that hand-eye coordination of like looking at the piece, drawing it. And that's kind of how you get that like uh, muscle memory in your hands and in your mind of like, okay, I've drawn an I've drawn up flowers a hundred times. Now I, I can kind of have a visualize in my head and kind of draw it from imagination. So that's kind of my advice is, you know, just kind of copy, draw and draw. And, you know, that creates a visual library in your head. Continuous drawing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I think that's fantastic advice. And I just want to thank you again for joining us this Saturday and talking a little bit about your experience and being an artist and everything. Um, and so I'm going to tell all of our viewers to make sure to check out the camp website, which is linked in the comments of this video. And continue to look at our Facebook page for opportunities to work with Mr. E. Um, and if you're interested in seeing more of his artwork, you can follow him on Instagram, which is also in the comments of this video. So make sure to tune in next Saturday to see another featured camp teaching artist. Thank you guys for joining us and thank you, Mr. E, and we'll see you all next time. All right, see ya. Thanks for having me.